My name's Alex. I work here at Off-Road Addiction. Um, this is one of our latest creations um, that I've spent a lot of time on. Um, it is a 1977 Jeep CJ5. This is a original Renegade Levi's Edition. Um, Levi's Edition had a couple extra features that the normal base models didn't, um, including, which we'll see here in a little bit, the seats. They have Levi's buttons in them and also the original top would have had Levi's buttons. Unfortunately, that's one of those things that these old CJ5s you can't get for anymore. Um, a lot of the parts on this um, have either been replaced or completely refurbished. So we actually took delivery of this Jeep back when we were in our old shop, which would have been about 20... Uh, 19, I believe. We kind of started making plans for it and it was in really, really rough condition. Yeah, the whole, the whole interior, the soft top, everything was pretty much coming apart. There was giant holes in the roof. Um, and even the original tub, because of that, had gotten water damage and had a lot of rust through it. Um, so this thing was very, very rough when we got it um, and had a long way to come. Kind of the first steps of our process, um, we got it completely tore down um, everything stripped down. We had the motor sent off to have rebuilt, um, as well as the transmission and transfer case. We sent the frame off to have it sandblasted and powder coated along with the axles. Um, then completely rebuilt the axles, re-geared them, um, all new parts in there. We did a disc brake conversion on the rear as well as a uh, brake booster, so we'd have really good brakes. After that, we went through a time of kind of struggling with uh, what to do with the body. Um, due to the rust, we were originally going to um, try and go in and repair all the rust damage because um, it wasn't severe, but a lot of the um, metal pinch seams and stuff like that had a lot of rust in them. Um, we ended up deciding that it was a little too far gone to really work with, so we ended up getting a replacement CJ tub and along with that came a number of issues because they do not make them to manufacture specifications. You know, these are not uh, American made. And so there was a lot of custom fitting for stuff, um, including some details like the replacement tub didn't have these raised Jeep em emblems in them anymore. Um, so we actually had to go in, remove these from the factory tub, and weld them into place on the new tub. Um, just because we wanted to keep that little bit of history and originality to it. This guy here is getting ready to go to paint and body. Okay, this is a CJ that we're restoring, frame off restoration. You've seen it before on the channel, a few odds and ends here and there. Alex did some dope metal work up here on this, smoothed it all out, made it look dope. And because this is an aftermarket tub, his Jeep logo was just smooth. There was no Jeep logo. So he cut this out of the old tub, put it there, welded it, grinded it, made it dope, zero bondo. And uh, yeah, looks good. So we went with a best top, soft top on it. Um, this thing fits great. It's great quality. Um, still does the whole fold down everything. Um, has optional half door or you can throw the top of it on it and have the typical zip out window and stuff like that. Great top, original color for this Levi's model. All right, so in the back, a uh, customer wanted a beefier tire carrier because originally the tire carriers um, would cause cracking in the body just over time. Uh, we wanted to avoid that, plus we went to a model with a tailgate on it. Um, so back here what we have is a motobuilt rear bumper, and we built off that bumper a swing out tire carrier and a jerry can carrier. Um, the jerry can carrier is also a motobuilt, um, and that's all bolted to our custom swing out tire carrier. Over here, super simple design. We have a pin, lift the pin, pull it out of the bushing. Swings out and we even have a nice little 
stop so your tire doesn't get into your tail light, locks it open so it doesn't fall in on you. Um, so this is our tire carrier. Um, as you can see, jerry can mounts. Um, and we also have our logo in both sides down here in the truss section. Um, we use TMR Customs um, tire spindle kit on that. Um, really great product there, super beefy. And then here we have our nice little tailgate. So we got our tailgate here. Can even fold the rear seat forward and have some more storage space back here. Snappy, snappy, snappy. You just reach through here, grab the T-handle, pull up on the lever, swing her back in, and then stick the pin in. So one of the issues with rebuilding these old CJs and mostly other old vehicles in general is aftermarket parts aren't always the best quality. You can't always find uh, specific parts for your model. Um, so one of the things we went through on this is um, in this year and one other year, I believe it is, they had a round fuel filler. All the other models of CJs had a square fuel filler. We couldn't find this one anywhere and the original one was plastic. It was all bent out of shape and split from age. And so we had to go in and have this one custom made out of a carbon fiber uh, 3D printed um, filament. Um, so we could keep that original detail for this specific year. But up front, um, we decided to upgrade with a set of Oracle LED headlights. These things I can say from personal experience are great at night, um, so much brighter than a typical halogen. Um, one of the best lights on the market. The taillights are also LED. Um, for the front bumper up here, we also have a motor, motor built bumper, um, as well as the Warren M827S. That is with the synthetic winch and a Factor 55 hook. All right, so inside, um, even though it looks like your typical gauge cluster and all your factory controls and stuff, it is actually a lot updated. Um, starting with our speedometer here, um, this is actually a GPS speedometer, um, no more cable to deal with. Um, this is really the way to go in these CJ builds um, versus a typical replacement part. We've had a lot of issues with those. Uh, we came across this company and these gauges are phenomenal. Um, and that includes the voltage gauge and the oil gauge. They're um, all newer style uh, stepper motor gauges, um, which is a huge upgrade over the original ones. Um, here looks like a factory radio. It's not. We got Bluetooth. We have uh, XM radio, um, obviously your typical radio and everything like that. Um, super cool unit. Um, this is the original dash. Um, we had gotten a replacement dash and it did not fit um, everything very well. So we actually went back and had the original dash painted and um, it only had one speaker hole. So we put one really good kicker speaker in it um, <laughs> with a nice, nice mesh covering so you don't see the little tweeter built into it. Um, otherwise it would stick out because it's bright yellow. Um, but yeah, it actually has really good audio for a single speaker, but this is a very small vehicle and you don't need a whole lot. All right, a couple of the other upgrades we have in here. Um, we have some Rugged Ridge replacement seats. Um, so they retain the factory design and look, um, but we had to have them reupholstered. So they would match the Levi's edition versus just being a flat black seat. Um, so as you can see, we have reused the original Levi's um, button inserts um, on front seat and the rear seat. So that's really cool. Uh, we have also upgraded to retractable seat belts instead of the old school um, lap belt style. One other thing that we decided to upgrade um, was our shift knobs and shift boots. 
The factory replacements on them are kind of ugly, stiff rubber units that I really just didn't want to put in here. So I went in, found these awesome leather boots from Stronghold. Um, they fit really nicely. And if I remember right, we also got the shift knobs from them and they're a nice milled aluminum um, for our three speed pattern and Dana 300 transfer case shifter. A really, really nice upgrade there. Just really wraps it up. So one of the things we couldn't replicate in this unfortunately was the dash. Um, this is the same style of dash. However, the original one for the Levi's edition had a uh, denim pattern also in this um, same color, uh, but we couldn't figure out a way to replicate that. No one makes one, so we stayed with the rest of the black kind of design on this and went with the black dash. The last thing we did to kind of help this tub survive the elements for its years to come is in the fender wells and also in the tub here, you'll see we had the whole thing bedlined. Um, we're not gonna have any more issues with water getting into it and everything is completely sealed from the outside. So all the um, blower motor um, and heater in this is original. I went through and completely rebuilt that unit um, including new foam, new motor, new wheel, new heater core, um, everything. Uh, unfortunately, this didn't have AC and it would be a whole pain to try and go through and add AC to this. And typically they're pretty unsightly as well because you see a lot of that larger box uh, when you go and add those in. Um, but yeah, all the cable operated heater controls are original. We also have a really fancy refurbished ashtray. All right, so we're gonna take a look under the hood now, um, but to start with, the customer opted to go with a hood latch just so nobody tries to get under here and do no funny business. Keep everyone out of it. And voila, beautiful piece of work. This is the original AMC 304 motor that came out of it that we sent off to have rebuilt. Don't cut that. Got to plug the distributor back in, guys. got it back, completely painted it. We now have shorty headers, a Davis Unified Ignition um, HEI distributor. Huge upgrade over the factory ignition system on these. Um, we did opt to go with the factory filter housing on a Howell Engineering TBI fuel upgrade, fuel injection upgrade. Um, a little touch we added was we had Levi's painted onto it to match the body color. Super, super trick little detail there. As I said before, we went to a vacuum booster, give it a little bit extra braking because it was originally manual brakes and manual steering. So we also upgraded the power steering while we were here, um, converted it to power steering that is and this thing drives phenomenally stops turns super smoothly awesome ride we also have a griffin three inch aluminum radiator and our little coolant reservoir there and then over here powering everything we have a pro series platinum agm battery um, and then all the wiring, every little bit of wiring on this has been upgraded with heavier power wires, heavier ground wires, um, also upgraded to dual electric fans, and every bit of wire in this thing is new.
It has been an honor getting to build this thing. This has been in their family since 1977, new off the lot, and I'm really glad to see this dream become a reality for this customer. My name is Lindell Bush. <clears throat> I came about this Jeep. It was from my sister. My sister and brother-in-law purchased this from a farm and implement store in Wacomas, Oklahoma in 1977. And they moved to uh, the Navajo Reservation in Arizona. That, that's the reason why they purchased it, because they felt they could use it or have some recreation in it out there. And from there, they moved up to uh, Carbondale, Colorado, and kept the Jeep. And they sold it to my uh, nephew who uh, lived in Aurora, Colorado, and he kept it for several years outside, and uh, he decided he was going to make a psychedelic Jeep out of it, and I offered to buy it from him, and from there, I thought I could possibly restore it myself, but I did not, and I let the people here at Off-Road Addiction restored and I'm very thankful for them <laughs> and that's about it. If any of y'all have a old Jeep or really anything whether it's an international old Chevy anything um, we would be happy to take it to the next level for you. Again I'm Alex this is Off-Road Addiction we'll see you next time.